Hello everybody, Julian from Julian Tech TM and finally, PC building is back! GPU prices have finally become somewhat stable and we can do PC C C PC components and combinations For today's build, I was wondering if I can still build a value gaming PC at $1,500 It's a no-nonsense purely for gaming build but still leaves room for upgrades in the future To get that pricing for this build, my secret weapon is the XFX Radeon RX 6600 XT that's a lot of X, I gotta say. The RTX 3060 killer that will cost you about $600 to $700 if you can get your hands on it. Lah. On this table are all the parts I have handpicked. And if you want to follow this build, my advice is to be flexible with your parts. Today, I found these components at a good deal. Tomorrow, it might not be a good deal anymore. So let's cut the crap and go to our first component, the CPU. I chose the Ryzen 5 3600 over the Intel i5 10400F and the 11400F for two reasons. The 3600 is more valued for money than the 10400F and the 11400F. The 10400F doesn't support Gen 4 and the 11400F is more expensive. Plus, you probably need to get a more expensive Intel motherboard, the B560. And two, if someone adds to number one, more value. You get smart access memory. If you want to learn more about smart access memory, you can watch my video for the 6800 XT. Next up, the motherboard. I chose the Gigabyte B550M DS3H. And the reason why I chose this is simply because this costs only $140 for a whole bunch of features like PCIe Gen 4, overclocking support, and you will also get two slots of M.2. And you can get two NVMe SSD, which is great for future NVMe expansion. The minor problem I have with this motherboard is that it doesn't have USB Type-C, which if you are just using this PC for gaming, shouldn't be a big problem. Next, for the CPU cooler, I have the Aftershock M40 Frost, which is basically an ID cooling SE224 XT. I need to use a better cooler because the stock cooler that comes with the 3600 is just not good enough. Especially if you're planning to play games every day for long hours. For RAM, I got the Clef Bolt XR 2x8 3600MHz CL18. You don't need to get the exact same model as me. I realized for Clef in particular, the uglier the RAM, okay lah, don't, don't, don't hurt the feeling lah, the, the, the not so good looking the RAM ah, the cheaper it is, even if the performance is the same as the Chio RAM. So tips for cutting costs for RAM is get ugly RAM. For storage, I went with the Lexa NM620 512GB NVMe SSD Gen 3. I chose Gen 3 because at the moment, there is no point paying for Gen 4 as nothing makes use of the extra speed yet. But having the choice of Gen 4 in the future would be good. And if you're looking at Windows 11 direct storage, it's been revealed that the Gen 3 is capable of it. Might not be as fast, but at least it works. Just to put my NVMe SSD, I spent $40 for this. Next up, we got the case. Ah, I got the Aftershock Rapid case. Unfortunately, you can't buy this case by itself unless you buy a PC from Aftershock. But you can buy the Techware Forge M. Simply put, this case has good airflow for fans and has good enough space for cable management. Next up, the PSU. The rule of PSU is you don't cheap out on a PSU. So get at least 80 plus bronze and go for a good brand. A good trick is to see how much warranty they give. For example, this Super Flower Legion gives you five years warranty. So if they dare to put five year warranty, you know, probably it's gonna be good. So I went for the 80 plus gold, but there is one way you can save cost for a power supply, which is the modularity. Instead of going for a fully modular power supply, you can go for a non-modular or even a semi-modular power supply. And last but not least, we have the GPU. The XFX Radeon RX 6600 XT. 8 GB of DDR6 RAM, base clock speed of 1968 MHz, boost clock speeds of 2589 MHz, and also very, very chill. At least chill to me lah. It has a old school boxy feel that I grew up with. Very nostalgic. But all this is very superficial, only on paper. What matters is benchmark performance, right? Right. 
Using 3D Mark, the 6600 XT sits between the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti for traditional graphic rendering on Time Spy and Fire Strike. And as expected, it does fall short when it comes to ray tracing performance for Port Royale. I also ran AAA games on the PC with the goal to compare different CPU configurations and to compare the RX 6600 XT with the RTX 3060. The 3600 and 11400F perform similarly with the RTX 6600 XT. However, compared with the R9 5900X, there is a bottleneck. You could pay 200 plus more to get a 5600X to remove that bottleneck, but it's not worth the marginal performance increase. You're better off getting a better GPU instead. I know a lot of the benchmarks that I just showed you is 1440p. So I'm thinking, if you buy this GPU, you're thinking more of 1080p gaming. So why not try some 1080p gaming firsthand? I think games like Valorant will be a game that you would like to see. Might not be the most graphic intensive game to play, but you want the most FPS out of the game. That's the thing that you want. So let's try Valorant. 180 to 210 FPS, which is very, very comfortable. Next settings. Oh my God, my, sh my aiming, man, my aiming. So at the 99th percentile is about 130, 120 FPS. Very, very comfortable. Having this GPU with a 144Hz monitor, with a 1080p monitor, yeah, no problem. Not bad, not bad. Let's try CSGO. So I'll pwn a few enemies. Ah, there's one. Pwn, pwn. You're gonna get pwn. 2 HP, ah, damn it. I got pwn. Results are in the average FPS for CSGO, Dust2, Deathmatch, no bots is 228 on average and a 99th percentile of 108 percentile. Not too bad, not too bad indeed. The 6600 XT's performance sits in between the 3060 and the 3060 Ti, but it lags behind when it comes to ray tracing. Considering that the price of the 3060 and the 3060 Ti is $899 and $1,000 respectively. So if you find the 6600 XT lower than $800, it's a no-brainer to go for the 6600 XT over the 3060, especially if you don't care about ray tracing. And let's not even talk about the RTX 2060, okay? It's this, this card just kills it. The only reason I can see someone going for the RTX 3060 is for features like DLSS. Of course, AMD has their AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2, but it all depends on what games you play to. But all this goes out the window because if you want to play games at 1080p, then the 6600 XT is the way to go. But if you're looking to game at 1440p, then the 6600 XT will struggle in games that are high GPU intensive. Games like CSGO, Valorant, no problem. Problem lah, but Cyberpunk, maybe. As of writing this, the USA MSRP for the 6600 XT is in between the MSRP of the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti. Of course, given the current GPU prices in Singapore, the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti are obviously not going to be at MSRP. But the 6600 XT might be released near MSRP. And I estimate the price to be around $600 if you're very lucky to $800. This set the cost of this PC to $1,489 to $1,689. Okay lah, hit the $1,500 budget right. I think if we change the PSU to bronze, we can reduce the price even more. Oh. And here's a deal for you guys. I've worked with Aftershock to sell a similar build at an affordable $1,575, which is well below the cost of the RTX 3060 bundle that they are selling themselves. So if you want to build this yourself and you see a 6600 XT, right, only buy it when it's below $800. Anything at all? 801? Don't want. 799? Buy. But you know, if this video go viral and then Singaporeans go and buy all the 6600 XT, then the demand go high, the, the supply go down, then the price go up, then... Sorry lah, not gonna be MSRP lah. But you know, to avoid the headache, you can go for the Aftershock build. I don't get any amount of money if you buy more PCs. It's just, it's a really good deal. So at the end of the day, it's all about supply and demand. So my advice is, if 1080p is good enough for you, you better get the 6600 XT before it's gone. Yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much. It's been really fun to start building PCs again. Like, it's, it's, it's so long. Uh, one, one more one more thing. One of y'all can actually buy this PC if you want. You, you can email one of the Aftershock sales team. It's going to be in the description below to request to buy this. It's going to be up for sale for a week and if no one buys it, they're just going to dismantle it 
And the good thing is they don't sell back the used components when I use it. The cable management, I can tell you, it took me super long and it's, it's one of the best cable management I've ever done. Not to oversell it on it. I don't know lah, maybe you don't want me, maybe you want me to sign, uh, how I know, how I know, blah, 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 done. Basically what I'm trying to say is the information to buy this is in the description. The price might be different, not the 1575, but we, we put the description in the below, the information and the description and everything below, okay? Can.